moment that for conservatives and a lot of independents who wanted a tough president to yeah. stand up to something. I'm not saying yeah. Obama should fire anybody, but he hasn't defined himself by a stand. O Obama wasn't even willing to fire Ben Bernanke, the head who's of the now Time the, Man of the Year, the, the head of the Federal Reserve. Yeah. And, and you know, Ben Bernanke did, I think, a good job after the crisis hit. He didn't recognize the crisis before it hit. After the crisis hit, he did a good job. But that doesn't mean you don't deserve to get reappointed to the Federal Reserve. He did a good job managing the crisis. What we need now, though, is somebody who is going to manage the aftermath of the crisis, somebody who is genuinely dedicated to re-regulating the financial sector. Let me show you something that Ben Bernanke said to uh, the annual meeting of economists uh, uh, earlier this week, last Sunday, I think it was. The best response to the housing bubble would have been regulatory rather than monetary. Stronger regulation and supervision aimed at problems with underwriting practices and lenders' risk management would have been a more effective and surgical approach for constraining the housing bubble than a general increase in interest rates. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, whoops, what? <laughs> well, now he's saying what, what, what a lot of us said earlier, um, that we should have had better regulation, you know, rather than just fiddling with interest rates. Kevin mentioned that maybe Obama should not have retained Ben Bernanke. But we, know, we are so far away from that discussion when you look at everything else that's happened. You know, who are some of the top people at Treasury now? A lot of them came from Goldman Sachs. You have a you great know. chart in your yeah. story in Mother Jones yeah. on that. I mean, my favorite one that, that, that I wrote about, and I don't know him personally, he could be a great guy. I've never even met him. I tried to interview him, but he wouldn't consent. Mark Patterson, he's the chief of staff for Timothy Geithner, the Treasury Department uh, Secretary. He was a lobbyist for Goldman Sachs. What did he do as a lobbyist for Goldman Sachs? He lobbied against a bill in the Senate to restrain, it was a very modest bill, to restrain CEO compensation. Basically gave shareholders the right to say, we think you're paying them too much. It wasn't even mandatory. It wouldn't even cut back pay. He, you know, Goldman Sachs would have none of that. He lobbied against that bill. Who authored that bill? Barack Obama, when he was a senator. So the guy who fought Barack Obama on, C on, on CEO pay, an issue that Barack Obama says he cares about, and I believe he does, is now running the Treasury Department for Tim Geithner. I mean, this really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So what would happen? You both talk about mobilization. Let's say that President Obama, in his upcoming State of the Union speech, called for mobilization, <laughs> asked people to do something about this. What would that mean? What, would, what shape would mobilization take? He could do it in the State of the Union address, and that might be a place to start. But, you know, Barack Obama famously won election through a huge grassroots movement. He's got an enormous, I think, 13 million names on his email list and, and so forth. But he's refused to use that. He, he's write, write, the, write the first email he would send if you were <laughs> Obama. What would you send those millions of, of, of young people and others who were looking for real change in the election of 2008? What would you say? If it were my email, I would say, look, we need to break up the big banks. Look, Alan Greenspan, of all people, yeah. has said, yeah. If a bank is too big to fail, it's too big. Alan Greenspan said that. If Alan Greenspan thinks that we ought to break up big banks, if Paul Volcker thinks we ought to break up big banks, this is not a fringe lefty oh, view. Right. This, this ought to be a mainstream view, and yet it's nowhere. That kind of thing I'll should give be you the email. I'll give you the first line. The first line should be, we've been taken for a ride. You know, you know what happened in 2008. I came into office promising change. I've sent some bills up there. Uh, they were strong. Maybe they could have been stronger, and I see that they're being weaker. This only makes me believe that we have to bear down harder. And I can only do this with your help. Okay, I've read okay. that. I'm really, okay. I'm really okay. excited about okay, that, good. President okay. Corn. Make, <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? Make what sure can you I send help me that fifty dollars yeah. as well? Yeah, well, that's uh, what can uh, I do to okay, help? Okay, well, then, but then he would have to. He would say, "I have, you know, I have, I have reset my legislative agenda on this front. Here are the five you know, uh, provisions I want to see passed this year on, uh, regarding financial reform. Uh, I want the Consumer uh, uh, Finance Protection Agency to have teeth and be able to offer this. I want, you know, derivatives fully, you know, fully transparent. Okay, I want to put back the wall between and banking. Let me tell you why. Now, a lot of this, you know, some of this goes to fundamental issues, some of it doesn't, but at least move the, you know, move the ball in that direction. If you want to have real change, there's only one place that can come from. That, that's out of Congress. Congress is the only body which is big enough 
to actually restrain Wall Street. One way or another, you have to take your 13 million or your 50 million or whatever number of people you've got, you've got to mobilize them to tell their congressman that they're mad as hell and they're not going to vote for them if they don't pass this legislation. But it's no the one only can way. In Mother Jones, without thinking. So these guys must be laughing all the way to the <laughs> bank. I mean, the same people who bought the government off, brought the economy down, caused suffering to millions of people from Orange County to Portland, Maine, are winning all over again, you say, because you say, in the same issue, no one's fighting back. My guess is that they feel they dodged the biggest bullet of their lives. I mean, who would have thought uh, a year ago that uh, we'd be back, we'd be at this point? I mean, I think they probably, you know, worried that, you know, that, 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 that there'd be communist laws passed, you know, that people would be so angry. You know, one thing to keep in mind is that time is our enemy. The longer we take to do this, the more watered down the bills are going to get because the financial crisis recedes. This is a classic uh, situation where you have a very small group of people with tremendous money and power and influence to, to wield to get their way versus the rest of us who get nickeled and dimed and we have other things to worry about. You know, people are, you know, you know, uh, are worrying about their, maybe their kids going to school safely and getting good educations. We, you know, we have everything to worry about. The bankers and the investment bankers and the financiers, they can grease the way with, with millions of dollars that gets them billions of dollars in, 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 a re in return. And, um, and it, it's not a fair fight. People need to have someone to rally around. Yeah. if they're going to make this happen. And I think that needs to be Barack Obama. He needs to be willing to really take on the bankers. You know, Franklin Roosevelt, in, uh, in his first term, I remember he had a famous quote where he talked about, there are, you know, there are people out there who hate me. I have earned their hate, yeah. and, and I embrace their hate. And, and I think Barack Obama needs to be willing to earn the hate of some bankers. But I don't believe that is his nature do you I, it seems to me after all this time his nature is of a conciliator conciliation is, is a good trade in, in most cases I actually think it, I think it works well for Obama but sometimes there are times for a conciliatory attitude there are times to take somebody on now one thing one place where I think he's missing a bet is Barack Obama came into office feeling like he did want to bring the country together he wanted to try to end the partisan wars but you know this issue of Wall Street is one where if he took on Wall Street, the bankers might hate him. But I think that would bring the country together more than he thinks. I think there is a lot of anger toward Wall Street. It's latent, but it's there among liberals, among conservatives, among libertarians, among independents. I think if there's any one issue where a real show of emotion on his part and, and, a, and a real show that he was going to take these guys on could bring the country together, it very well might be taking so how, on Wall Street. How long do we wait for Godot? Well, that's, that's up to Godot. That's, that's up to Obama. Nobody, nobody knows. David Korn and Kevin Drum, thank you for being with us on The Journal.